What's happening, Hookaholics? I just got back from taking a long road trip out of state to pick up something. Something I've had and I wanted another one of. So, uh, just to recap. Uh, Y'all know about my big fiasco with uh, Dick's Sporting Goods. So, those who don't know. In November, on the 12th, I ordered in pre-order um, the Dick's Sporting Goods Mystery Tackle Box collaboration, their MTB Reserve Crate. So, it's a $200 fishing tackle box inside of a wooden crate like a you know like a pallet and um, uh, and then you know you get $260 worth of, of uh, value or 265 for uh, 32 to 40 items it's a limited production thing so I ordered it in pre-order on the 12th of November uh, it was scheduled this to show up at my door uh, on the 27th of November, my original plan was to keep it until December of the, uh, like the first and do 12 days of teasing. And then 12 days before Christmas, I was going to show that I had the box. I wasn't going to open it up. I was going to explain from the exterior what it is. And I was going to run a, a contest and I was going to give that box away to one of you hookaholics out there. That was going to be my Christmas 2020 um, season gift, okay? Um, on the 26th of this of November, slated again, I was supposed to receive it on the 27th of November. On the 26th of November, my email came back uh, with a, uh, your package is delayed. I tried to figure out what happened, where it was, didn't get much resp response, finally got in touch with con uh, customer service on the 24th of December. No chance for Christmas. I had previously done a little teaser where I showed real blown up close up pictures of the crate asking you in my community to have to guess what it was. A few of you threw in your, you know, your, your ideas. One of you actually guessed it correctly and I responded, yep, that's it. I ordered it. It's coming. I find out in December that no, it's not coming. It's not coming. Nobody ever picked it up from the store to deliver to me in the first place way back in November. It's now been over a month. And, uh, yeah, by the way, we don't have any left. There was some back and forth. They eventually found that they did have some in stock. And in, a whole, in that whole fiasco, customer service on their side, um, with a little bit of nudging from me, because I wasn't taking any crap at that point, because they had ruined what I had wholeheartedly planned to be a gift to all y'all, um, now it's December the 25th, or 24th, you know, there's no chance I can do a giveaway now. They refunded me the money. They gave me a $10 off uh, code, customer service code, um, to take to store and use for $10 off of whatever I want to purchase. They found some and were shipping one out to me, and so they reordered it. That reorder was then canceled. I went back, finally got a new one, another reorder. That one went through. So I got my money back. I got a $10 off coupon. They added points to my card, my membership to Dick's. And that raised me to have a $20 off in-store credit. And then they shipped me, or mailed me, uh, a nice little package here, a little envelope uh, from Dick's. Right there. Um... Inside was a letter from Dix over this whole fiasco that said, uh, Thank you for contacting Dix Sporting Goods. Enclosed is a $100 gift card. You may use this on any in-store or online purchase. This $100 card, um, the $20 uh, credit by adding points to my account, and the $10 off customer service specific $10 discount. Um, so $130 credited to me. So 
I went to my local Princeton Dicks in Princeton, New Jersey here, and uh, they didn't have what I was looking for. So they did find that just over the bridge in Pennsylvania, in the Dick's store there, they did have what I wanted. Because I wasn't taking any crap, I was going to get something, and I was going to make sure that whatever I got using the money that they gave me back, um, it was going to... It was going to benefit me. So it's something that I'm not going to buy something cheap, but I want to get a good price. I mean, I could have went and got a $150, uh, you know, rod reel combo and paid 20 bucks for it. Uh, but I thought, no, I'll, I'll do a, like a 50% off thing in my mind. So what I settled on, and the, another sidetrack reason why I did this is, I don't know if you're aware, but as of February the 1st, um, Shimano will be increasing, inflating the prices of their products. Reels, rods, equipment, Shimano's re-allocating, uh, re redistributing their, their prices. They're, they're going over them and doing an adjustment. So a lot of items out of Shimano are now, not all, but many, many items in Shimano are going to see uh, 5, 10, 15, 20, 30% value increases. So a reel that you might have got last year for $89 next or February the 2nd of 2022 that $89 rod and reel or whatever could now be $95 $100 depending on what category it seems to fall in in their uh, understandings what I settled on uh, because I wanted to get it before the February 1st price increase I ran down and I picked up this guy. Shimano Corrado DC. This is the 151. Uh, you know me. Um, 151 designation. This is the high gear, not the X gear, not the extra fast. This is the 7.4, not, uh, not the 8 or 9 or whatever the, X, the uh, uh, extra gear is. Um, but the 151 designation is your left hand retrieve. 150 designation is your right hand retrieve. Um, so this is a Corrado DC. It's not a new item. They are still selling them for $250. But just like I did with that rod and reel combo uh, way back when with the discounts and the coupon and the inside circular sale, I leveraged all of my discounts for this guy. $139.19. So for $133, $134, uh, I got a $250 today. It might be $260 uh, as of, you know, in, in three days. Uh, but a $250 rod, or excuse me, reel uh, for $133.19, tax included. Um, outside of being given a gift card from a family member or relative, this is probably the most discount you can get from a store because the money came from the store, the credits to my account came from the store, uh, the discount code came from the store. Um, so this is the probably the largest single discount on an item in store that any store has ever offered. So, I mean, somebody out there is good with math because I'm not great with math. Type down in the description below what percentage off this ends up being. So do the, do the simple math. We'll go on the base price. $249.99 is the retail price. Take the $100 gift card. Take the $20 off from, the, uh, from my account and the $10 off from the customer service uh, representative discount. That's $130 off. So what percentage of uh, $249.99 is $130? God help me, I'm not going to go Google it. So <laughs> if you want to do it, I'd appreciate it. Throw it down in the descriptions below. But that's the discount I got on this guy. So uh, I'm sure all of you know what the Shimano's are. A little sticker. But uh, the Corrado DC is, is really... I attune this no different than the $99, $100 uh, 
um, SLX DC. I have a pair of those. I have right and left hand retrieve in those. Um, I put this in the exact same category as the SLX. This isn't this isn't like the Scorpion DC. The Scorpion DC is an awesome uh, reel. Use that. It's got uh, an amazing ability to cast lighter lighter lures. If you're looking for a bait finesse um, DC reel for your ultra light rods, the Scorpion DC is probably one of the better Shimano DC reels. Um, it's not that, you know, this is the Corrado, it's not the Metanium, it's, you know, it's, it's not the, the $700, $600 reels, it's the $250, and personally, I look at it like, in the, in the vein of what reels go for today, uh, no matter whether they're digitally controlled reel like this one, or just your standard, uh, bait caster, or open phaser, or, you know, a trolling reel, whatever, got your reel oil comes with real oil papers um these uh the 200 dollars range 250 300 300 dollars and below in dcs i consider 300 dollars and below your entry level 400 500 600 700 those are your higher end actual dcs so do i expect this to eliminate all backlash no no dc real don't care if you spend 800 dollars for um you know, a metanium DC or, or what have you, um, it's it's not going to eliminate all backlashes. It's going to greatly, significantly reduce the number of backlashes. So if you were to backlash into wind trying to skip um, 7 out of 10 times, a DC is going to bring that down to maybe 1 or 2 out of 10. Um, I mean, that's just the fact that this digitally controlled chip for the magnetic braking can act and react to the speed of the spool as the line's being pulled off of it a thousand times a second. Your finger, no matter how you know astute you are, thumb control, your brain, to your arm, to your muscles, to your finger, to your thumb, that's not a thousand times a second. It just, you know. But uh, really quick aside before I get any further. So, I mean, it's it's got... Uh, that standard gray with the little green caps. Not exactly my prefer. I don't care about paint schemes, but I, I like grays and blacks. That's just me. Um, when you get into these like bright orange and stuff, it's not my cup of tea. I don't need skittles on my boat deck. Uh, you know, I just need working uh, equipment. But uh, to set a DC reel, not a standard um, bait casting reel, it's different. You have to have the correct connection, the correct resistance between your reel and your casting brake, your, your reel brake here, your control knob. When you're setting a standard bait caster without the digital control, you want minimal friction between the spool here and the side and the, the armatures inside the, the reel, okay? You want that spool to be really, really loose. You want it to go re, you know, if you want it distance, you want that, okay? With a DC reel, it's not that simple. You want a precise amount of friction between this spool and the control brakes. Think of it like regenerated brakes on your car. This is like an ABS system, for lack of a better term. You need a bit of friction to regenerate the electricity on those eco cars. Um, on the braking systems, like, you know, your, your supercars, like Porsches and whatnot. So as you brake, it regenerates and charges the battery of the high, high, hybrid Porsche or whatever, and then it runs, and then as you brake, it, the, the friction as the rotors are spinning, it creates electricity to run, run back and regenerate in the battery. Minute amounts, but still. Same basic principle here. You need a little bit of contact and friction, not only so that the brakes can do their job, accurately but also that's what's going to power that computer chip that's inside the dc system here so to to set up a standard non-digital controlled bait caster basically what you'll do is you'll loosen your 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 casting control knob you'll click your bail and you'll let the lure at the end fall at a rate that's controlled so that when it strikes the water or the deck of your boat or the ground it doesn't overrun and spool extra line, 
okay? And you'll have to reset this every time you change weight and honestly, every time you change bait. Uh, it's not just weight. If you go from uh, a quarter ounce jig to a quarter ounce swim bait, you still have to change that bait casting drop setting. You want to adjust it every single time. With a DC, set it once and you're done. It doesn't matter what you put on this reel, you've set it once. And the key to a DC reel, and this is why so many people backlash on a DC reel, is they try to set it the old way for a standard reel. When you're setting a DC reel, the only thing you're trying to do is eliminate that side-to-side -side clatter. You want enough friction between, with the casting control knob, that it gets rid of that play. That's all. So we just keep tensioning this down. Still there. Still there. Still there. A little less. So now it's completely gone. And now I'm going to back it back off. Just to find that sweet spot a little tighter. All right. So there's no rattle, no play. That spool is just held that it's not going side to side. There's no side to side um, play in the spool. So it's just enough friction there or push on those brakes that it's not rattling back and back, back and forth. That's all you got to do. That's it. Now you spool it up with whatever you want. Mono. Uh, fluoro, braid, um, and then your digital controls here. It'll show you in the pa pamphlet. Basically, I hear a lot of people, Corrado's a little different, more like the, the Scorpion DC and the others, y even with the uh, the SLX DC, they've, they've, they're more nuanced to the line itself. A lot of people say, okay, four's the most breaks. That is true. This has got a four, four settings for the breaks and an open uh, system. So you, you click it to O and it opens up the, uh, the side plate. Right. So it's got open and then one through four. So, uh, click it to open side plate slides down and exposes your spool and there's your DC breaking and there's your spool. Again, the idea is Inside here, and this is sealed, so you could actually drop this in water. It's not going to damage it. Um, you don't want to put any real lubricant in here, but me personally, the first thing I do is I take out my spool and I put a little bit of real grease in this side, in the crank handle side of the spool, just to reduce the friction on that end. But I always leave uh, the pin side with the DC brake, the side plate. I don't, I don't over lube that at all. So uh, back to the braking system. Um, all right, so back to close. Now, four is the most brakes, okay? Again, it's got a setting one to four. Four is your most brakes. That's if you're skipping under a dock, if you're casting into wind, if you've got a really, really light, light lure, and you know that it's got a, a high probability of overcasting, of overrunning, okay? I want to say three is your um, your fluorocarbon. Three is like your, I don't remember if three is braid. It's, typically they have like an M, uh, an F. F is your fluorocarbon, an M is your monofilament. They'll have another one for braid. Uh, the DC is a little bit different, or the Corrado DC is a little bit different. I don't remember if three is for your monofilament and fluorocarbon or if two is. But one is for fluorocarbon and monofilament. The other one is for your braid. Uh, basically, again, less breaking on level three than level four. Less breaks are applied on level two than level three. And the least amount of breaks, again, is applied on level one. So it's true what they say, but there are nuances between the settings as to which one is for what style of line. But that's it, basically. Once you've set this up where the play is gone in here, no matter what lure you put on this, the brakes are going to do the automatic work for you. The settings on the side are only adjusting 
the nuance extra amount of braking you want because you have a line that has no stretch or is lightweight like braid or a line that has a memory that could cause this to backlash like fluorocarbon or monofilament a stiffer nylon line because the nylon lines you'll want a little bit more braking because as they come off all willy-nilly they can cause issues also you'll want to go to a, a braking like a number three if you're throwing large baits that can get caught in the wind as you're casting, even on a non-windy day, things that are going to tumble, um, you know, such like that. But, uh, but yeah, so I just wanted to say that it's all said and done. The issues are over. Now I am done with Dick's Sporting Goods altogether. I don't know, honestly, if this last purchase gave me another $10 off coupon. Whenever I run down so that I have no credits on my account, I'm never shopping at Dick's again, not online and not in store. It's just not going to happen. This was the straw that broke the camel's back. I, I just did not appreciate everything that happened, including up to the fact that when I finally did get the box after all of that fiasco, it was a box that was returned to the store. They just threw it in a box and shipped it to me. Like, hey, you know, the heck with you. You can get return goods. You, you don't even get something new when you should have had a new one to begin with in the first place. So for all of that, yeah, I took advantage and I, I, I did give them money. I gave them $133 of my money. Uh, but at the same time, I feel like at least I got a, a good discount on it. Uh, whether that's 50% or not, I don't know. One of you is going to tell me. Uh, so thank you for, I know this has been a little bit long, 20 minutes or so. But I, uh, I appreciate you hanging in there and understanding where uh, this all stands. So that's the end of the saga when it comes to the MTB um, reserve crate and my dicks fiasco but uh thank you all for supporting me as always from me to you peace i'll catch you on the next cast and i'm still waiting for pictures send me your pictures to the email right here foulmouthfishing at gmail dot or excuse me foulmouthfisherman at gmail.com send in your picks boat picks rod and reel picks combo picks tackle picks i love looking at all your tackle i love looking at my tackle so uh, share so I can put them up like here in this void space that's just empty and looks sad. You could be here. <laughs> As always, peace. I'll catch you on the next cast. Take care, Hookaholics. picks rod and reel picks combo picks tackle picks i love looking at all your tackle i love looking at my tackle so uh share so i can put them up like here in this void space that's just empty and looks sad you could be here <laughs> as always peace i'll catch you on the next cast take care hookaholics